Um, my name is Rebecca, and I have been sewing for probably about 25 years. I learned to sew um, in middle school. Um, it's kind of funny because my mom sews, she beads and does all that stuff. You know, when I was growing up, she did all of that, but I actually didn't learn from her from right away. Um, so I learned in home economics back then. It was home economics, but it's facts, or I'm not sure what it's called now. Uh. But um, that's where I learned the basics of a sewing machine. And um, I always tell people that are learning how to sew, or you know, because you can't just jump right in and then get your fabric and figure out, you know, what you're doing. You have to learn how to use the sewing machine first. So that's kind of what I had picked up from school. And then, then I went home and went to my mom and said, "This is what I learned." And then she showed me kind of more of how to do outfits and how to do like jingle dresses and all this kind of stuff. So I've been doing that for quite a few years um, with all of my children. I have six children. Um, they all dance and so I've been doing all of their outfits, all their regalia, all through the, ever since, you know, they were small. Um, my oldest daughter is 21, so she's, you know, been dancing up since then. And so um, just uh, having to keep up with everybody's uh, sewing and things and you know of course when they grow um, you know constantly doing stuff for them and um, the one thing that I've learned about uh, from doing all of this work you know especially with the way things are going now it's fashion it's in it's um, you know a lot of people um, really make a living out of doing ribbon skirts or doing you know different type of sewing and beadwork and that's kind of where I started going into with uh, being a stay-at-home mom um, I started focusing more on um, doing beadwork and sewing as a living, you know, since I can be at home and do that and then have the children and run and drop them off at school here and there. Um, and that was a little bit of a background about, you know, kind of where I, I got started. Um, I brought a few different skirts from a few different artists. Um, this first one is made by Sierra Pete. And um, this is my daughter's skirt. She played uh, guitar in high school. And I thought it was funny. She was like, well, I want to get myself on a skirt. I'm like, well, fancy enough to do that. So the lady who made it, she even you know, went as far as detailed in doing her little band's shoes. Um, she's got the earrings, the guitar strings that are individually sewn. Um, you know, when you make ribbon skirts or any kind of outfit, um, it's your creation. You come up with whatever you want to do. Um, this is one that I made, and this is just a simple, um, just a casual skirt, skirt you can wear every day. Um, the fabric already is colorful enough that you don't really need to add ribbon on top of it. So that's one I did. And then this other one is made by uh, Simone Paskman. Um, she does a lot of the applique designs on the skirt. And a lot of these skirts, they're not cheap. So I, this one, I believe we paid like 400 for the skirt. And she's one of these artists that she's, it's hard to get some of her stuff. And then she doesn't do orders, you know, that kind of thing. So when you see something available, you gotta jump right on it. Um, this skirt is a full stack ribbon skirt. And this was made by Asia Tweeter. Um, and this is another one that, you know, is pretty versatile as far as, you know, what you can wear with it and that type of thing. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do a kid size ribbon skirt. So my daughter, my six-year-old, she wears about a size eight. Um, you get a yard of fabric. I go to the, you know, you go to Joann's or Walmart. Walmart has a free cut. You can go in and ask for a yard of fabric. This one's not a yard. I did kind of pre-cut it out a little bit. Um, my daughter's waist was uh, 24 inches. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is cut this out as the skirt. And so it's one piece right now. And then I'm going to cut it into two pieces. Since I've been sewing for so long, I've like found different hacks, different ways of doing things faster. Um, it's 
different people will say, oh, I did, I learned this way. I learned how to do it, you know, from this person or whatever. And, you know, you can do whatever you want to do, you know, if you're sewing however you want to create it. Um, so it's pretty much opened as far as, like, what you're thinking about, you know, like, how you want to sew it. But since I've been doing it for so long, I've always figured out the fastest, easiest way to do it. Um, so I cut it in, down the middle, and then I have two pieces now, and what I'm going to do is measure it out so that it's the shape of a skirt with a front and the back. Then on this one, it's got um, the print on the bottom, so I'm going to cut that off as well. And then I just use a Sharpie. Um, you're going to cut it off anyway, or you're going to sew over it. Um, you can use a crayon, you can use a pencil, a pen, any type of writing utensil. And so this skirt is going to be 21 inches long. And then for her waist, since it's 24 inches, um, then you divide that by four. So it'll be like one side and one side, um, and then the front and the back. So that would be six inches. And so since um, you don't want to go right with the um, exact measurements, you want to go a little bit over so there's room. And then on the bottom, you want to have to bail out the skirt because you don't want to be walking like, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so you do that and measure your measurements. So what I usually do, so since it would be a six, um, I usually go to an eight. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, especially with kids and them growing out, you can even go up to nine inches. And then I just mark. So this is where it's folded. And then this is um, where the seam is going to be. And then, um, so that right there is eight. And then on the bottom, and that's where I bail it out. So when I hold my ruler, I'm going to have my ruler at an angle. Let me see if I can do this. So it's going to be like that. So where it's not going to be straight with the seam, it's going to come out. And then I have both pieces, you know, some people like to cut one piece at a time, but since I'm always doing things last minute or day before the event or something, I'm always finding the fastest way to do it. Some people have like the quilting um, cutters that look like the pizza cutters. They can use their ruler and just roll it right across. Or, um, there's really no wrong way to do it. So now I have my front and back. So two, two pieces. Then when I put the ribbon on, I use a glue stick. Um, the good thing about the glue is that it's non-toxic. Um, it's a light glue. It's washable. So like when you wash your skirt, the glue's gone. Um, I've heard different people say, oh, ruin your sewing machine or different stuff, but I've never, as long as I've been sewing, I've never had that problem. So I get my ribbon, and then with this one, I'm just going to do um, just the ribbon. You can do like ribbon that hangs off the side like this, or like how this skirt is that I did, um, how the ribbon just goes right to the seam. But just due to time, I'm just going to do the one with the right to the seam. So then usually what I'll do is I'll cut two of each. And then when, on this part, this is pretty much your blank canvas. You can do whatever you want to do. Because some people say, oh, 
you got to put your rivers this way or that way or whatever kind of story there is that goes along to it. Um, it's up to you. You know, if you want to put two ribbons and call it good, then that's pretty much what you can do. Um, or if you want to do like the full stack skirt, you can do that. It's your choice, your art, you're creating it. So, you know, this is where you can come up with however you want to do it. Um, then I'll measure. And then on the bottoms, I always make sure that they're the same because when you sew them together, you don't want your ribbons like one to be higher than the other. So then it will be uneven or either you'll have to fix it and then it will mess up the skirts. So. And then this part, um, I usually pick about four inches from the bottom and I'll mark four inches and then mark another four inches. Then I put my glue on and I kind of keep it more towards the middle of the ribbon but if you get some towards the edge then it's really not that much of a big deal because it still sews okay with the machine. And then I just press it down so where I mark the four inches on both sides so that's how the ribbons will come out. Then I get um, all the colors that I have and then I'll put them on the skirt. Then I had brought one that I had already got started where I put the ribbon down already. And so that's how it would look after gluing all the ribbon down. And then, um, so after you have it to this point to where all the ribbons are down, then you go to your sewing machine and sew everything down. So um, one thing that I do that's just kind of, you know, to kill time is uh, I use a multicolored thread so I don't have to go through and switch. There's some people, um, like with this skirt, you know, that really go through and make sure they have all the detail of matching the thread with the ribbon. Um, you know, so that's going through and having to change everything out. But I just do the multicolored thread just to just sew right through all of it. And then after all of the ribbons sewn down, then you sew the skirt together. And so when you do that part, that's when you make sure your ribbon matches up on both sides. So then if you miss, um, mess up on your measurements, then you don't want to have like your ribbon be way off. Then you pin it all together. Then on the top, if there's any, like a little bit of, um, a little bit over on the top or the bottom, you can just trim it. So then once you have it pinned, you get your sewing machine and you sew both sides. And then after you sew both sides, I usually go back through um, with a straight, I'll do a straight stitch first to sew it together and then I'll zigzag. Um, some people might have sergers or that type of thing to go back over it so that your skirt, you know, like over time, you know, it can have some wear and tear that, you know, you don't want your skirt falling apart. So then after you do both hems, then you go around and do the bottom hem of the skirt. And so you fold it, fold it once, fold it again, and you go all the way around with the sewing machine. Um, some people use bias tape or um, like what this one is the satin, um, satin binding for blankets. You can use that to where you just put it at the end of your skirt if you don't want to do the hem. And then when you get to the top, put your elastic in. So then it's both sewed together and then the same thing and then with your elastic you go with your waist size. So if you have a kid or whatever you'll have to 
grab them and then you just put it tight enough to where it's comfortable but where it's not cutting off. And then you can do that. And then you make, you sew the top hem probably about a little bit bigger than uh, the size of this. And this is about an inch and a fourth wide of an elastic band. So then you would fold it. Let's see if I can show you. And sometimes if you have to, like especially if you're just learning, it's better to do the bigger hems. But if you need to go up a little bit, like if you have experience with sewing, then you can uh, do a smaller fold and then fold it again to where it makes that type of the bigger hem. So then when you get to this part, then you sew all the way around it. Then when you get to the beginning part of where you started sewing, you leave about um, an inch to two inch, just enough to get your elastic in. Then you get a safety pin. Safe, I usually use these bigger ones to <coughs> better. Put it at the end of the elastic. Then you run it all the way around the waist here. So then you run it on the inside and put it all the way around so that it'll start scrunching up like that. And you gotta make sure to hold on to the bot, the back part so it doesn't go in. Um, then when you get them together, you'll sew these together. You'll sew them together and then when you, um, that little opening that you left to get the elastic in, you'll sew that up. And then after that, um, you're done with your skirt, you can turn it around. Um, if you need to iron it or do any, like cut your threads off for the final things, then that's what you need to do. So that's how you do a skirt, a crash course in doing a ribbon skirt. <laughs>